More than 100 lawyers are set to sign a declaration of conscience, as they put it, stating that they will not... They will refuse to prosecute climate activists from eco-groups like Just Stop Oil and Extinction Rebellion. Are they right? Should we stop prosecuting eco-protesters because they're protesting about something so catastrophic as climate change? Or does this make a mockery of our neutral legal system? Justice is blind. Joining us to discuss is one of the lawyers who has signed up, Joe Maugham from The Good Law Project, and arguing against... It's like a court, <laughs> Barrister Grace Gwynn, who says this undermines the legal profession. Well, let's uh, discuss this. I do think we have uh, a, a, a short video of some of the uh, protesters that we have spoken to. Oh, are oh. we not using it? They've got a technical problem with it, apparently. They can't run it. Oh, that's a shame, because we in this studio have very often mm -hmm. challenged quite vigorously those eco-protesters. But, Joe Moore, you think that they shouldn't... that, they're, as a barrister, you wouldn't challenge them in court? Well, in fact, I mean, no-one's talking about uh, not prosecuting. Um, we're talking about not defending. Um, I mean, the, the, the fundamental issue, though, is, is this. Sometimes... Sorry, did no, you... You, you did are you... talking about not prosecuting. You, you're saying that you wouldn't prosecute somebody who was uh, on charges of the... sitting, gluing their bum to the no, wall, basically, uh, for, uh, for an eco-protest. Uh, 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 absolutely right. Right. Um, the issue uh, that often is raised in the, uh, 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 at the bar is the right to a fair trial, the right to a fair defence. Um, the issue, uh, really, for, for those of us who've signed the declaration, is that the laws that are permitting the destruction of the planet are profoundly unjust. And fundamentally, although um, we're going to hear from Grace, and I, I understand and I sympathise with the position of those who, who do prosecution and defence work all the time, um, that the right to uh, a fair trial, the cab rank rule, are incredibly important. The issue for us is that the laws mm. um, at the moment that enable the destruction of the planet, that enable new fossil fuel projects, are fundamentally But unjust. it's not your job, though, is it? It's, it's surely it's up to magistrates and judges and, where necessary, juries to determine whether a crime has been committed. So let me present you with a scenario here. Your wife, I think, is called Claire. Supposing your wife were to be taken suddenly ill, and needed an ambulance to get her to hospital. But one of these protests is blocking the local roads and the ambulance is delayed. And she, as a result, is either made much more ill because she doesn't get to the hospital in time or, God help us, dies. Surely those responsible for blocking the road should at least be brought into court and prosecuted and the evidence against them tested to see if they've committed a crime. And why would you not do that? Um... So, it's inevitable that um, protests cause disruption and cause inconvenience and can cause... Um, can have serious consequences. And can be illegal. Uh, 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 and can be illegal. I'll come on to that. Um, but, you know, let's, let's get this into perspective. You were showing earlier in your clip um, footage of violent protests in France. Eco-protesters are not uh, violent. The declaration is confined to peaceful um, uh, protest. Could you address and, the scenario and... that I just outlined to you? Because, because that is something which could affect anybody, uh, could affect me, could affect any of our viewers. They could find themselves unable to get to hospital. I want to focus on this. Unable to get to hospital because there are a group of protesters superglued to the local road and they may be made much iller as a result or they may lose their lives. Now, that could... Many w would interpret that as a criminal offence. Uh, lots of people would interpret it as a criminal offence. But um, there is no world in which no harm is done. Have you seen um, the report from the scientists only last week uh, about uh, humanity being at a tipping point, there being no turning back? So my family live in New Zealand. I have family in New Zealand. Uh, and uh, my mum has lived there now for 40 years. Um, and she is... Uh, absolutely devastated at what's happening in New Zealand. Lots and lots of people losing their lives, not theoretically losing their lives, actually losing their lives. Huge swathes of, of farmland uh, completely destroyed. You A third of if... Pakistan underwater. All right. So, so refuse... there's no world, Richard, in which we can avoid no, but having if refu... bad things no, happen. But we live in a world where these things have to be tested in open court. And, if, and, and let's, let's just look at this really clearly. Um, if you refuse to prosecute, as you are doing, uh, somebody because you agree with their political principles and their ecological principles, would you therefore the next day defend someone who you knew had committed a serious paedophile act? Would you defend them? There are very, very different issues. So what we're saying well, when we you? say that we won't prosecute is we're saying that the law is wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, and by 
uh, prosecuting or defending someone on, under an unjust law, you're basically giving credibility to that law. There is um, many examples from history of laws that have been unjust. So, until the late 80s in the UK, it was impossible to rape your wife. Your wife was treated legally as your possession. Um, that law was wrong, um, uh, and no barrister should have um, worked to support it. We've had slavery laws wrong. And what we are saying is that the laws that permit um, the destruction of the planet, that permit new fossil fuel projects, um, have profound consequences for, yeah. for, for okay. us and for our let's kids. Put the, l l so let's uh, establish the other side of this argument, as if we're in mm -hmm. open court, Grace Gwynne, mm -hmm. barrister as well. Um, it is such a catastrophe and the law is so wrong on climate change that it would be immoral to prosecute, prosecute someone who protested against it. How do you argue your case against? Quite frankly, it's not our job to make a decision about whether a law is just. The reason that the legislature and the judiciary and barristers are two very separate functions is for that very reason. And actually, there's an argument to say, where will it end? Because it's a very subjective argument. And what's important and what's just or unjust to one person might be grossly different to the next. And sadly, as barristers, our opinion doesn't matter. When we go in and represent a client, it doesn't matter what they've been accused of or what they may have been convicted of, they have a right to representation. And I think that this, this petition, this agreement, is in breach of the, the fundamental principles of being a barrister, which is to be independent and impartial. Are there cases where you feel what the person, perhaps, uh, you would be required to defend has done something so heinous that you wouldn't, in good conscience, be able to stand up in a court and defend them? Well, no, is the short answer, because I represent people that have been accused of the most abhorrent crimes and also been convicted of them, child sex offences, paedophilia, rapists. This happens to me on a weekly basis, that I represent these people in a family law dispute. And so, actually, it doesn't matter what my moral conscience is or what my personal beliefs are about what they've done or mm -hmm. what they've been accused of. My job is to be independent, impartial and give them best so representation. Supposing you passionately believed in, in these protesters' cause, passionately believed in it, um, but, nevertheless, in the course of a protest, the law seems to have been broken, let's say, um, how would you feel about prosecuting somebody who had done something that, that completely equated with your conscience and what you believed in? And again, that does happen to me mm -hmm. daily. You know, there are, there are people that have been a, a found to have caused fractures to their children, and then I'm fighting to get their children back into their care. And the reality of the situation is, as a barrister, we are trained to be independent. It's one of our core duties to maintain independence. And if you can't do that, then I say you shouldn't be a barrister. You are completely rejecting a fundamental duty. It's not a principle or an ethical basis. It's a duty of barristers to be independent. So you would prosecute an, ego, an eco warrior who was accused of breaking the law during yes. a protest? You would prosecute I would. Them, even if you passionately believed in the court? Correct. Because I have an ability to be independent, because it's my job to be. Shouldn't so... you do the same? Uh, no. The, 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 the difference between the cases that Grace is discussing, uh, that we all believe in the right to a fair trial. So, if you're accused of um, paedophilia, you still have the right to a fair trial, uh, and we all believe, Grace and I, that um, paedophiles should go to prison. The difference between that situation and this situation mm -hmm. is that here, the laws that permit new fossil fuel projects are unjust, they are wrong. They are akin to the laws that permitted slavery, right, said this. that permitted... You've made that point. Um, well, look... Grace, the question that comes out of your very passionate argument is that you don't think Joe should be a barrister. If you can't maintain independence, then no, this is the wrong career for you. We don't have a right to have our opinion. When we walk into those court buildings, we are there as the voice of the client. We don't have the luxury and the opportunity to voice our own opinions. Joe? And if we can't have an ind independent bar, there's no point to a You're bar at all. You're in the wrong job, Joe. You're in the wrong job. Well, um, uh, Grace is um, perfectly entitled to express her view. Her view is a very conventional view about what the function of the law is. But I think that sometimes the laws are so unjust that they should not be un upheld by anyone. Well, we've heard both sides of the argument, so uh, you are the judge and jury in this. Uh, we asked in a Twitter poll what you thought. And 73% said, no, we should not stop prosecuting eco-warriors. Nearly three quarters, so you're pretty much out on a limb. But thank you for coming in and making your case. Yeah, thank you and both. thank you for making yours. Very much so. Those <laughs> arguing for change are always out on a limb. <laughs> <laughs> well, OK, let's... And sometimes they're wrong.